what a wonderful presentation of the essence of the good news that comes out of what happened on that day nearly 2,000 years ago. We catch a glimpse of Peter. We finish the story Sunday morning and uh, this confused, broken, difficult man. You read the Gospels and you think, how the heck could he be on anyone's team? He wouldn't get the first base if we're trying to build a team and you looked at this man and confused, broken, difficult, impetuous, um, making promises he can't keep and yet uh, in that confusion, in that brokenness, Jesus reaches out to him and he experiences the grace, the free unmerited favour of God. That's what grace means, free, unmerited. I can't earn it. It comes from him. It's not cheap. It's free but not cheap because it costs the light of his son. Peter finds salvation. And we can identify uh, with the, the character of Peter. If you read the four Gospels, and you'll be amazed. You'll see yourself there. You'll see how Jesus treated him that's how he treats us and with love and forgiveness and giving us a second chance a third chance a fourth chance and in all of our confusion and uh, it wasn't that Peter was looking for him Jesus found him and he found grace and grace can also mean God's riches at Christ's expense Mary man broken battered addicted relationship addict and uh, so, such a vulnerable human being, so needy, again, reflective of, of, of our world and the brokenness in relationships and, and how uh, this is reality. And it was in New Testament times. And boy, did she find grace, did she find forgiveness. Everyone wanted to condemn her. Everyone wanted to condemn her and put her down. And you may be like that, where you've just been felt like I've been put down my whole life. I've been cursed by authority figures who speak negatively and ill to me. And, and maybe there's an internal script that drives you to do demeaning things and to harm yourself emotionally in relationships. The only one who can undo those scripts and put a new, a new narrative in our life is Jesus and give us a new identity. And she found the loving forgiveness of Christ. And boy, did she worship. Man, you know, the more you've sinned, the more grateful you are when you find forgiveness and, and you just want to worship and thank him. I know for myself, I've been walking in the way of Jesus now for since I was 17 and I'm 65 now. And I still get overwhelmed when I think of, you found me, you forgave me. I know what I was like. And I know how lost I was in, as a child of the 60s and early 70s and just wild and out of control and not looking for him. But he found me and I still cannot believe he forgave me and changed me and, and he makes us into a different person. And you look back and you think, was I really like that? Yes, I was. My birth name is Sinner. My adopted name is Child of God. And we never forget our beginnings. His name was Simon, but he said, okay, you're a weak reed of a man. The wind blows and you go this way. The wind blows and you go that way. I'm going to make you a rock, Peter, Petros in the Greek. And he became a pillar, a strength, powerhouse for Jesus. The story of Mary, amazing story. It's been repeated, repeated, repeated for hundreds, for thousands of for, for years and millions of people have been empowered and encouraged by what she found through Christ. And then the thief on the cross, I mean, I still, I, you can't make this story up. That's what I found. You, you can't make, you, you read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, and half of them have to do with the final week of his life. And you read the stories and, and you can't, it's impossible to make it up. It's like the, 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 the ring of authenticity. It's like God's love letter to us. And here he is, 
dying in our place. And he was, it was a wretched scene. We sanitize it. But they used to crucify them stark naked to shame them. He was beaten and abused and tormented. And all the weight of the sin, the guilt of, of, of the sin of the world came upon him. And even as he's on that cross, he finds something that he could say to the Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. They're ignorant. They don't know what they're doing. And he says, Father, forgive them. And then that thief on the cross. And Jesus didn't say to him, mate, you can't get into the kingdom of God unless you do certain things. You've got to get baptized in water to start with. And we believe in water baptism. He didn't say, you better get off the cross and get baptized in water. You better start paying some money into into my kingdom. He didn't say that. He didn't say, "You, you better start doing some good things. He said, no, today, this day, you'll be with me in heaven. Because he saw in his heart contrition and honesty and humility and, and, and there was love in his heart for the Saviour. There was humility of, of acknowledging his own sinfulness and wrongdoing, whereas the other guy didn't. And Jesus says, mate, this day. So he's on the cross, dying, and he's thinking of others. He's thinking of his murderers. He's thinking of his mum. And, and he talks to John and says, John, look after her. And a, and a man who's dying next to him. What a Saviour. What a Saviour. What a forgiving, loving, gracious God. God is not into condemning us. He's not into pointing out our sins. He actually, we point out our own sins. We know our failures. We know our foibles. We know our mistakes. And in the quietness of our own heart, none of us have got it together. We're all sinners. And one sin's not worse than another. We're all sinners and, and, and we're all destined for damnation. No one is good enough to earn the grace of God. But the good news is that God himself paid the price. He paid, he took the rap for us. So love drove him to the cross. And it's true what that thief said. He could have, Jesus could have commanded 80,000 angels to wipe out the Roman Empire and to set up his kingdom now to be a kingdom of force and power. But he says, no, my kingdom is not a kingdom of force and power. I'm not into power, palaces, prestige, because my kingdom's a kingdom of love. I, I, I want to win people over because they see the truth of what I've done. They see God's love. It was God's love that held him on the cross. Love for us. People think the Romans killed him. Hey, God somehow worked through the Romans and yes, they put him to death, but he could have lived three or four days. He was a strong man. And the centurion, when he looked at him and watched him and Jesus at the end, he just said, after he forgave the world's sin, he just said, Father, into your hands, I commit my spirit. He just goes, sure, when he dies. He chose to die. He gave over. And, and so he predicted this. He goes, no one could put me to death. I choose to die and I choose to rise again that we celebrate on Easter Sunday. And so he dies in our place. And the Roman centurion nearly flipped out. He goes, man, I, I see people dying all the time. He's a strong man. He could have lived for, for, for three or four more days. And he says, surely this is God in human form. Surely this is the Son of God. He himself was touched. Everyone at that time. And here on this Good Friday service, each of us has a story. Each of us is unique. Each of us is loved by the same God who sent Jesus, his Son. He loves you deeply. He knows you better than you know yourself. And the greatest thing that he can, that that can happen to you this Good Friday is that you would respond to his offer of love like Peter crying out given a second chance like Mary who had been out of control in her relationships and caused such damage to herself and others she found grace like the thief on the cross you can be restored you can be forgiven it'd be wonderful for us now to conclude this service with us responding to him You're here because you're not a God-hater. You're open to him. Most of you love Jesus. Some of you have come because it's Good Friday and you think, well, it's about God, it's about Jesus, I want to know more. You know, the risen Christ 
is here among us through his Holy Spirit. And, and we're going to seal this time of, of, of celebration by taking the communion together. Because just before he was crucified, he instituted this and said to his disciples, guys, I want you to do it as often as you can because this little ordinance, this little symbolic gesture that the church embraced speaks so powerfully of the cross and what he did. A little biscuit, a bit of wine. It represents my body, represents my blood. When you eat it, and you eat it, so it becomes part of you. Because it, it, it becomes part of your, your life. It's a symbol of faith. So to, to be a genuine Christ follower, it's embracing him. It's putting your trust in him. It's imbibing him into your life. It's having a personal relationship with him where he lives within you. And we're going to take the Lord's Supper. And, and I want to just or encourage us to respond to him in love, in worship. Maybe you've never received Christ as your personal saviour. And this Easter will be the day of decision for you. This will be the, the moment where you can say, you know what, I knew about him, but now I know him. Uh, I, I knew there was a God out there, but now this God can come and live within me through the Holy Spirit, because now the sin has been removed, my sin has been forgiven, and God now can come and dwell in my body. This is amazing. This is amazing good news that God wants to live within us. And it's possible when our sins have been forgiven and we respond and receive Christ as Peter, as Mary, as the thief on the cross did. So if you're visiting here at the Christian Family Centre, I encourage you to take the emblems. You might say, oh, I'm not really a, you know, I'm not a member of the church. Hey, it, it's not our church's ordinance. It's Jesus' ordinance. He's ordered people to say, do it as often as you meet together. Remember me. So as we, so, so I welcome you to, to embrace it. And maybe for some of you, it'll be the moment where you say, you know what, I'm going to eat and drink this. And I'm going to say, Jesus, come into my life. As this bread and wine's coming into my body, Jesus, through your Holy Spirit, come into my heart, into my inner life. I want to know you. I need you. I'm like Peter. I'm like the woman. I'm like the thief. I, I, I need you to be at the center of my life. And he will respond to your heart's cry, just like he did to the thief on the cross. So I invite you to, to take the emeralds. If you want to let them pass you by, that's fine. No pressure at all. But this is a time where we can respond this Good Friday, 2019, to the living Christ who died for our sins to reconcile us to a perfect God. We're imperfect, he's perfect. We're sinful, he's sinless. We can't, it's, it's an impassable chasm between perfection and imperfection. The cross is the bridge by which heaven and earth meet through someone dying in our place. And as we go through our understanding of what the cross accomplished, God accepts us and forgives us. And we can look into his face and he smiles at us. He's not angry. He's not a God of judgment. He's not angry with you. He cries and weeps and says, I want you to experience eternal life, forgiveness, peace with me, a new sense of meaning and purpose to your life. I encourage you to take it and we'll pray before we do. So ushers, come and bring the emblems to us quickly and uh, thank you musicians. <laughs>